I just stumbled upon a tweet that says you should be storing your booleans as timestamps in your database. And this sounds crazy, but there's actually quite a lot of benefits that come along with it. And in this quick video, I wanna show you the pros and the cons of this approach. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the main reason that Vic says that you should be storing your Booleans as timestamps is mostly for debugging purposes and analytical purposes. Because instead of just knowing whether true or false a user has validated their email or whether or not some field in the database is deleted, this gives you a timestamp of when that actual thing occurred. So now I can say, hey, give me all of the users that verified their email within the last 30 days or if for some reason there's maybe a bug in your code and something happened over the last three days that shouldn't have, you can now take a look at all the users that verified their email or all the things that were deleted in that specific period of time. So it's really easy for you to roll back specific changes without having to roll back your entire database because obviously that causes you to lose a lot of data. So really this is for debugging and analytical purposes to try to figure out when these actual things happened. When did this email get verified? When was this thing deleted? And you can do it with really any Boolean flag in your entire database because you can just check, is this timestamp there? If so, it's true. If the timestamp is null, then obviously it is set to false. Now there's not only upside when it comes to this, there's obviously a lot of downside to doing it this way. And the biggest downside by far is just going to be the amount of space this takes up. If we look at just Postgres, for example, a Boolean data type takes one byte to store inside of the database. While if you look at a timestamp, there's a lot of different timestamps you can use, but just a generic timestamp is going to be eight bytes. And even if you only store just the date, it's still going to be four bytes. So at a minimum, you're using four times the data up to eight times the data just to store a Boolean. So if you have a table that's storing millions upon millions of rows of data, this extra couple bytes here and there is actually going to significantly add up and cost you quite a bit of money. So this is something I would only recommend doing on tables where maybe you're not storing a ton of data or where you don't really care about the cost of adding a few extra bytes to every single Boolean that you're storing. Now, in order to actually implement this in your code, there's also some downsides that you need to worry about. Here I just have a really simple drizzle implementation. You can see I have an ID for a user column and we have an email verified at, which is a timestamp. And this is essentially a Boolean for when they verified their email. Now, if I have a script here that I'm just getting all the users and their email verified at, so you can see I have two users that have verified their email and two users that have not. Now it's a little bit difficult to work with this because if I wanna check if a user has verified their email, what I need to do is just get that user and I say email verified at, and this is going to give me a timestamp. So obviously this code's gonna work fine if this is a date, then it's going to return true. But there's certain scenarios where having a date instead of a Boolean is not ideal. That's why in almost every single ORM or even directly inside the database, there's ways to essentially convert one field to another field. For example, inside of Drizzle, what we can do here is we can use this extras field. And what that allows me to do is to return extra columns of data. So in my case, I wanna return an email verified field. So I'm gonna convert this timestamp to an actual date. So what I wanna do is just use a function called is not null. This is built directly into Drizzle. I'm gonna pass it in the actual column I wanna check, which is my get email verified at. So this is going to return true if it is not null. And I'm just gonna say this is gonna be an email verified field, just like that. So now this is going to return to me email verified, which is going to be true or false based on is not null. And we just need to alias this real quick to email verified. This is just something that you have to do inside of Drizzle. But now once that's done, I'll go back to just console logging my users like this. And now you can see I'm getting true for the users that he have an email verified at. I'm getting false for ones that have null. I see here both of these are false. And then again, true here where the email verified at flag is set. So this is a relatively easy way to be able to implement that inside of your database. And again, any database and any ORM you're using is going to have a very similar way of doing this. But again, it's a little bit of extra code that you need to write. So you have to consider, is the benefit of being able to check when this Boolean was actually set important enough for me to deal with this small amount of extra code and the extra space that it's going to take inside of my database? In many cases, especially in more enterprise level applications, that is probably going to be something that you're going to say, yes, this is worth it. But maybe if you're working on a smaller application or you really don't care that much about when that actual field was changed from true to false or false to true, then it may not be something you really care very much about and it may just be useful storing it as a Boolean instead of a timestamp. Now, if you enjoyed this quick tip clean coding video, I'll link some others over here. And also if you wanna see more quick tip videos where I cover a small topic like this as quickly as possible, let me know down in the comments below. If there's enough demand, I'll definitely create more videos like this. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.